day the Lord has made and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. For Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is your day of deliverance. We thank you for joining us for Day of Deliverance today. You'll see some information on your screen. And if you will, we would love for you to uh, send us uh, any kind of contribution to this ministry because it will help us to grow and it will help us to continuously carry out the work of the gospel. So again, you will see the information on your screen. Please contact us and we would love to correspond with you. Right now, we thank you for joining us for Day of Deliverance. Let's get right into the word of God. We're coming from the book of Matthew chapter number one, beginning at verse number 18, and we're going to go down to verse number 23. Uh, as we are looking at that particular passage, I want to kind of preface everything because we have gotten into a series that I didn't even know was going to be a series because uh, as we were looking at this on last Sunday, we were talking about the kingdom of God. And we used for a subject last week, the kingdom of God. And it says that the kingdom suffers violence, but the violence take it by force. So this phrase, take it by force, has really been something that's been resonating in my spirit. And I've been kind of meditating on that over and over because we have used that phrase sometimes out of context all throughout the years. But what does it mean to take it by force? The kingdom, take it by force. Well, I believe it is saying that we must be aggressive and intentional about doing what is right. We, as the people of God, need to learn to be aggressive and intentional about doing what is right because we have so many distractions and we have so much pressure on us in this world and we have to be at a point to where we understand we are in a warfare. And if we're in a warfare, we're going to have to act like we are soldiers and militant in this spiritual warfare. The devil knows it's a warfare. And he fights. And so we have to learn how to use the weapons of our warfare to fight against the wiles of the wicked one. Amen. So when it's talking about the wiles of the wicked one, we're talking about the tricks of the devil. And God is using us in the earth. We say, oh, well, God's going to fight my battle. Yes, he does. But he uses us to fight the battle. He fights through us. Amen. He uses us, the, the mind that he's given to us, and that he's given us the word and everything that we need, his spirit in the earth, that we will learn to be aggressive and not passive about fighting in this warfare. Now, what is being attacked? Well, we know that our faith comes under attack, but our faith in various areas of life is tested. And we talked about the three areas where the warfare and the battles are. The battles are always in the area of health, wealth, and relationships. Everybody say health, wealth, and relationships. So no matter what battle you're in in life, it's going to be in one of these three categories. Now, that's the reason why it's important that when we are in a battle, that we need to know the enemy's tactics. It's important for us to know the enemy's tactics. And when we know the enemy's tactics, that means we're going to have to learn how to use the playbook. Come on now. We're talking about the word of God. This is our playbook. This is where we get our instruction. This is where we get the, the ability and the understanding that we need to go against this, this, this onslaught of the fight that the devil is bringing out against us. Aren't you tired of the devil stealing from the saints? Aren't you tired of the devil taking from the people of God? We need to be up and aware of what's going on. And so I believe that if we look at these messages in a way where we can use this as a way that we can, can fight in this battle. Now, this time of the year, there are a lot of things on people's minds about Christmas. And so I think that we can use what sometimes is called a Christmas message uh, to help us to understand one of the areas that we're going to look at today. We, we, we're going to talk about health, wealth and relationships. But today we're going to deal with relationships. Everybody say relationships. 
So when we look at Matthew chapter number one, beginning at verse number 18, we're going to look at a situation dealing with relationships. If you would like to, you can stand as we read verse 18 through 23, as we read the word of the Lord today. Ready? Read. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother, Mary, was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David. Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. May God bless the reading of his word on today. And we're going to use for a subject title, Joseph and Mary, a match made in heaven. Everybody say, Joseph and Mary, a match made in heaven. Now, we're going to look at this because we have plenty of warfare when it comes down to relationships. This, this message and the, and the points that I want to make in this message can apply to any relationship. But today we really want to look primarily at the marriage relationship. Amen? And that's because the enemy really wants to fight marriage. He wants to fight families. Family relationships. He wants to bring division in families. He wants to bring divisions wherever people have a partnership, wherever people have any kind of relationship where they're working together. The devil wants to bring some kind of division. He wants to bring up strife. And so we have, to, and I keep saying the devil because, see, the enemy is the devil. Sometimes we look at each other and say that we are the enemy, but we're not the enemy. Satan uses people. And people will sometimes give in to the suggestions that come from the devil. And therefore, when they give in to those suggestions that come from the devil, they start acting like the devil. And then that's when the division comes in. And the matter sometimes gets to where the, 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 real, uh, the real root of it is not being addressed. Sometimes there is division among people of different colors and different races, and they think that the problem is racism. There are folks who blame racism for everything, and, and, and race has nothing to do with it. You know, a lot of folks, <laughs> I heard the expression that said, we don't have a skin problem, we have a sin problem. If we really want to get down to the root of it. So we need to stop you know, blaming racism for every problem we have and other things that we sometimes bring up and say, well, you're the problem because of this. You're the, you're the problem because you're this way. When are we going to look at ourselves and see where we are causing the problem ourselves? The problem can sometimes be within you, okay? And we don't want to sometimes acknowledge that. So we want to look at what was going on with Joseph and Mary because you got to realize here there is a clash of kingdoms taking place. And we're going to look at this clash of kingdoms one in, in another message where I'm going to talk about Herod versus heaven. But in this case, I, I want to focus on the relationship between Joseph and Mary. How to fight for a good relationship. That's what we want to look at today. How to fight for a good relationship. If we have to be the kingdom, and we are the kingdom of God, we take it by force, meaning that we got to fight for what belongs to us. Now, we look at this relationship between Joseph and Mary, and this passage lets us know much about who they are, because it starts off by saying, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, 
when as his mother, Mary, was a spouse to Joseph. Everybody say she was a spouse to Joseph. These days we use the term engaged and we were we sometimes talk about, well, we are. This is my fiance. Uh, there are cultures even today that even when people are engaged to be married, they call each other husband and wife because they've already made such a commitment. And so when the commitment is made, even though they are not living together as husband and wife, they still consider each other husband and wife. And so this situation, we see that Mary and Joseph were a spouse to each other. They were promised to each other and looking forward to being married. But it says here, before they came together. Come on. Now, uh, everybody say, before they came together. Now, you got to understand what he's talking about, before they came together. Because it says, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So this coming together has to do with them coming together in a sexual relationship. Did they have a sexual relationship? No. But they were a spouse to each other, meaning that they were committed to each other. So this commitment is what we seem to lose today. We don't have the, 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 the seem like whatever it takes to be committed to each other. And so People want to do everything in a casual way, the way the world does it, not taking marriage and not taking relationships seriously, but we just have the casual relationships. So we got a lot of folks, even people who are in church these days, they're just having what they call casual sex, you know. Say, oh, we, it, it, we don't have a commitment. We, we don't really have it. We're not really uh, looking to get married. We might get married one day. I don't know. But we just want to try it out for now. You know, so they'll live together for years. Still committing fornication, still having sex and, and thinking that it's no big deal. And, and, and then they ask the, the question, who was that Tina Turner say? What love got to do with it? Ain't no love involved, you know, we just, we just having casual sex. And so the world thinks that there's nothing wrong with that. And now this same spirit is crept into the church where church folks, people in the pulpit having this casual sex and thinking, oh, it's no big deal. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, we're having safe sex. Ain't no such thing as safe sex unless you're talking about abstinence. That's the safest sex there is. Come on, can, can, we, can we talk? Are we grown? Uh, amen, come on. Let's, let's, let's be mature about everything because, see, the enemy is using this kind of a thing to, to destroy what God has made to be beautiful. And God has a purpose for everything. But if we do things God's way, it's going to be a threat against the kingdom of darkness. So, therefore, we got to learn that if we are people of God, we're people of the kingdom, Let's do things God's way. So the first thing I want to, if you will, write some notes down is to write down they respected one another in high regard. They knew that they were committed to each other. They were looking forward to getting married someday. And they had all of these plans to get married and they had all of these plans put together. And but 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 they respected each other. What has ever happened to respect? If you're going to fight the good fight of faith, when it comes down to having a good relationship, then you're going to have to learn how to fight to have respect one for another. So Joseph and Mary respected one another. And within this respect comes something called trust. Trust. If they, they, they had such trust for each other that when this misunderstanding came about, then their trust and their respect for one another held them strong. Because now look at what happened. It says that now they were a spouse. They had not come together, but yet she was found with child. We know it was with child of the Holy Ghost. But now imagine what Joseph could have been thinking. Man, who you been with? You been messing with somebody? What, what, what's going on, Mary? I thought, I thought different of you. 
I, I mean, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I'm confused now. You, you're a virgin. Who you, but you, you, you got a, you, you having a what? We got to go on paternity court. I mean, some, some got to, some got to give. We're going to have to get some DNA testing or something. So she shows up pregnant. Now, you know that the enemy can easily get in on this, right? Because he started planning all these thoughts in Joseph's mind. Where she's been, who she been with, who she's seen. I'm sure he, I mean, he might have been tempted to get her cell phone and say, well, who, you know, what, 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 who, who you been, who you've been talking to, who you been, let, let me, who you been texting? What's on your social media? Come on, Mary. Now, I, I mean, you know, this kind of thing just, just don't happen. So all kind of thoughts could be going through Joseph's mind right now. Because he knew he hadn't been with her. Baby ain't mine. No. It's time to get on paternity court. Let's get, a, let's get a DNA test going on. What's happening? But guess what? He had respect for her. And so now the devil is trying to plant these ideas in his mind to take away the respect and the trust that he had. Now, number two, it says he was minded to put her away privately. Minded to put her away privately. Now, this is the thing. He said this came to his mind. Hey, that, that's somebody else's baby. You know, I, I got to put it. I, I got to put her away. I can't. I can't. I can't deal with that. You know, I ain't. I ain't. I ain't raising no child that ain't mine. You know. You're going to be hitting me with all of these, you know, uh, you know, what, what they call it? Child support. <laughs> so I mean, I'm, I better get out of this thing quick. we we'll be talking about some kind of child support. They ain't mine. I ain't raising no baby that ain't mine. You know how y'all talk. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. He might have been thinking, I'm getting out of this thing. I'm getting out of this. But it says he was minded to put her away. But then it said privately. Because, see, there was something in the law that says that if she was caught in the act, that she is to be stoned to death. And, and then this would be a public thing. That she could be stoned to death. But Joseph still had enough respect for her that he did not want to embarrass her. So he was trying to think of a, a, a good, decent way to do this without causing embarrassment. So he decided, yeah, I'm going I'm to have to put her away. But I'm going to do it privately. I, I don't, I don't want to make a public thing. I don't, I don't want everybody talking about it. I don't want it to be all on the news and everywhere. I just want it to, I just want to smooth over it. Let's, let's get out of this thing and find a way to get out of it without everybody knowing my business. But this shows us, this is number two, that Joseph was a just man. What is a just man? A just man is a man who wants to be right with God first. That's what a just man is. So, so Joseph wants to do what is right. So Joseph is a what? A just man. Meaning he's right with God. That's the reason why he did not want to embarrass her. And if he was going to have to put her away, he'd rather do it privately. Joseph was a just man. Number three. Let's look at what it says here. It says that he thought on these things. He thought on these things. And then behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Number three is important. If you want to write this down, be willing to do right at the risk of losing the relationship. Be willing to do what is right at the risk of losing the relationship. That means you got to be harmful. Or harmless, rather. <laughs> harmless. You know, some people say, well, 
You, you, you just got to know how I feel. You got to know how I feel. Did you realize it's not important how you feel and it's not important for me to understand you? It's more important to have the understanding of God. Because people are always saying, well, you just don't understand. What do you mean I don't? I don't have to understand you. All I, the only understanding I need is, first of all, leaning not to my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge God. Because, see, if I acknowledge God, I'm going to think about what I'm doing before I do anything. So it said he thought on it. And as he was thinking on it, that's when the angel appeared to him. Because, see, he was not... He was, he was willing that if I have to lose this relationship, I'm still going to do what is right no matter what. I'm willing to do the right thing. And whatever the right thing is, it might even hurt the other person. I'm not doing this to hurt them. I'm not doing this to, to, to spite them. I'm doing what I believe is the right thing to do because I love God, and if I love God, I want to hear what God has to say. And whatever the Lord shows me, whatever the Lord tells me to do, then that's what I'm going to do. It may be that it, it is not what you want, but it's the best thing for the relationship. And that might mean you got to move out. You got to move out of my place. We can't, we can't, you can't stay here. You know, we can't keep living like this. It might mean that I got to move out. I don't necessarily know where I'm going. But to keep from living in fornication and to keep from living in a way that is not pleasing to God, where there's no peace in this house, then one of us got to go. If that means me, I have to leave or you have to leave, whatever. Sometimes division is necessary. Hello, somebody. Even Paul mentions this about marriage. He said that there might even be a time when, when, when contention gets so strong that you're going to have to separate for a while so that you can fast and pray. And while you're fasting and praying, you both are getting right with God, and then you come back together again. That's within the marriage. But if you're not married, you ain't got to worry about coming back together again because if you come back together again you need to be married <laughs> and remember there's an old saying it's not in the bible it says if you love something set it free if it comes back it's yours if it does not come back it never was come on because freedom is important how many of you know how important it is to be free? Have everybody felt free, you know, relieved from bondage, relieved from pressure? Come on. It's nothing like freedom. It's nothing like peace. And sometimes peace means we may have to depart. All right. That's, that's, the, tough, that's the tough one right there. <laughs> Next, it lets us know here that the angel came to Joseph. And he said, thou son of David. He reminded Joseph of who he was. You are the son of a king. You are in the royal family. You are in the family of God. God is the king and you're in the family of God. You're in his kingdom. Reminding you of who you are. You're better than this. You're better than this. So while you're thinking on this thing, while you're meditating and trying and, and trying to reason things out in your mind, because God said, come, let us reason together. So while you're reasoning things out in your mind, what is this? Why is this? And all of that. Then God can talk to you when you are when you are thinking on it. And then he says, son of David. Now, he, they, all of a sudden, he's reminded of who he is. And then he says, fear not. Everybody say fear not. Because see, it's the fear of this thing that can cause you to make mistakes. If you are afraid, whenever you have to make a tough decision, when you are afraid, when you have to meet a challenge, that fear can interfere with your thinking and your reasoning. And if you're not careful, you act on the fear 
then you're going to do something you regret. So he says, first of all, fear not. So when God comes to you, and, or, you know, in this case, it was an angel of the Lord speaking to him in a dream. And when God said something to him, the first thing he says is, fear not. Be calm. It's going to be all right. Just listen to me. Take unto thee, Mary, thy wife. God called her his wife. Take unto thee, Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. What is he saying to him? He says, when you think before you act, you be reasonable and not rash. That's number four. Think before you act. Be reasonable and not rash. When you're thinking, that's when God will talk to you. We make the mistakes when we don't think. We just act. We become reactive. We start reacting on things that we see that's going on around us. And, and we get upset and we get all emotional. And then when we start acting on the emotions, we do something that we're going to end up regretting. We hurt somebody or we're going to hurt ourselves. Have you anybody ever been there before? Been there before? I have. I have. Because it's a human thing. It's a human thing that we, we act on our emotions before we even stop and think. But if we stop and think, then the Spirit of the Lord will begin to talk to us. And he'll show us exactly what to do. See, he's letting Joseph know, listen, Joseph, you, you know, you, you're misunderstanding this thing. There's a reason for what's going on. It's, it's, it's not Mary's fault. You got to, when you start thinking about who you are in Christ, you begin to realize that some of the adversities that come up in our life is not the devil altogether. Sometimes God is allowing it. God is allowing it. And so when he stopped to think, he became reasonable in his thinking, and then God was able to do what? Number five, listen to God for instruction. Listen to God for instruction. What, now, what are we talking about? We're talking about how that we can fight for our good relationships. We want to fight for our good relationships. So it's important that we do what? Listen to God's instruction. Many times it's important that if, you, if you're not hearing anything in your spirit, just go to the word. Start reading the Bible and God will show you. He'll speak to you through that. Just get out that Bible and say, before I make any decision, before I do anything, before I, before I go and hurt somebody, I'm, I'm going to go to the Word and see if God has got a message for me. It may be a message. If, if I go to church, God would give me a message. It may be uh, if I go to Bible study, God would give me a message. Or if I just read my own Bible, God would give me a message. He'll show me what to do. How I many of you know that God, if he's been acknowledged, you don't want to lean to your own understanding. He says that he will do what? Direct your path. He promised that. And, it's, and things turn out so much better after you've heard from the Lord. It makes more sense. So number six, don't worry about others' opinion. Oh, my goodness. What God joined together is worth having. Don't worry about other people's opinion. What God has joined together, it is worth having. That which is worth having is worth fighting for. See, other people are going to have all kinds of opinions. You know, we better be careful about who we allow to speak into our lives. Because, you know, there, there are folks who you, you think they're your friends, but they'll start talking all kinds of negative things, giving their opinions. Well, if it was me, I would go ahead and have her stoned to death. If it was me, I would go ahead and, and, and put her away. If it was me, I'd do this. And they got all of these opinions. You know, you, you start reading all your uh, things where people say they, they like you on, on, on Facebook and Twitter and all this. And some of them ain't, ain't very kind. <laughs> you start putting your business out there and, and next thing you know, other folks putting all of their opinions out there and saying this and saying that. You got, a, you know, 200 and something messages there about, you know, what somebody thinks. And you don't need to let what somebody thinks guide your 
decision. So if God has spoken to you, lean on what God is saying. Sometimes it's best not to even read that stuff. Sometimes it's best not to even listen to a whole bunch of folks. Well, I, I got a lot of friends. They may not be your friends. <laughs> you think they're your friends. Your friends ought to be those who are close to God. And I think, really, if you, if you really want to find your true blue friend, it's going to be very few of them. Come on. Come on. It's tight, but it's right today. Come on. So don't worry about what other people say. That what God has put together. <laughs> Got to know that that's what's working. Number seven, know that some conflicts and challenges come from God to mature us. Some conflicts and challenges come from God to mature us. This was a child conceived by the Holy Spirit. There were probably many women going around saying, hey, I'm the, I'm the one that the prophet was talking about. I'm the one. I'm the one the prophet was talking about. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant but, uh, and I'm not married, uh, so, so maybe I'm going to be the one to have the Messiah. I'm the one that's bringing Emmanuel in, in, in the world. So many of them were probably going around saying that. But because Joseph and Mary were people of integrity and they trusted each other, they let that trust in each other and trust in God trump everything else. And that's the reason why God could trust them with this conflict. He knew what was in them. He knew who they were. He knew the kind of life they had been living. See, if you want to live your life to please the Lord and you want to walk close to God, God is going to walk close to you. And every conflict and every situation that you come across, you've got to understand that not only is God in it with you, sometimes God is causing it. Why? Because he wants us to be mature. So that's the reason why we can see Joseph was thinking through this thing. He did not make any rash decision. He did not get up and become uh, some kind of emotional basket case. No, Joseph waited to hear from the Lord. God, I, I, I know Mary. She's just not like that. It can't be not, not Mary. So Lord, show me what's going on here. Should I put her away or what, what do you want me to do, Lord? And so he went to sleep. He rested in the Lord. And God spoke to him while he was in his dream. And when God spoke to him in the dream, he knew, now, this thing is of the Holy Ghost. And I know I don't have to be afraid to take Mary as my wife. I'm going to trust the word of the Lord. Because, see, if he's a man of God, he knows how God speaks to him. And he knows that God is not going to lead him wrong. And so he would not be guided by nor persuaded by other people's opinion. But he's going to go on and say, God said, I'm supposed to take my wife. And regardless of what this situation looked like, regardless of what people say about it, regardless of everything that's going on, all the negative around me, I'm going to do what God said no matter what. There is something good coming out of this. And so when he began to have that kind of an attitude and God began to work with him, him, the anointing came upon Joseph and on Mary because they realized here is a conflict, but it was sent by God. Glory to God. Conflicts and challenges sometimes come from God, not so much the devil. The devil would try to use those conflicts and try to bring confusion and division. But if you stay strong in the Lord, you're going you're gonna to make it out all right. Number eight. Look at what happened. It says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Number eight, call on the name Jesus. Because when you call on the name of Jesus, he'll fix it all. And the devil is going to have to flee. Calling on the name of Jesus does a whole lot more than we can realize. He said, they that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what the conflict is. It's a simple thing to just call the name of Jesus and say, Lord, you got to fix this. You got to work it out. I'm calling upon you. I'm depending on you, Lord. So if I'm depending on you, I know you're going to work it out. I don't have to be stressed out. I don't have to be confused. I don't have to be in doubt, but I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm still going to love you, God, regardless of whatever is going on around me. So when you call on the name of Jesus, you realize you're calling on all the power of the universe. Because he says, all power is given unto me both in heaven and in earth and everywhere. All the power is in my hands. So you're calling on the most powerful one of all. So you got to realize that we have a weapon in our arsenal. The devil only has deception. The devil only has confusion. The devil only has fear. But we got to realize what our weapon is. Our weapon is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because his name is above every name. That every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that the name of Jesus is the name above all names. And he is Lord. Come out all to say amen today. When Joseph and Mary realized, hey, we got, a, we got a name. This is Emmanuel. Who is Emmanuel? Is interpreted God with us. God is with us. We put all of these things in place. and We're going to fight for this relationship because it's a relationship that God put together. And if God put this relationship together, I don't care who tries to pull it asunder. It is not going to work because we, we are determined to do what God says. But remember, you got to walk with the Lord. You can't go against the word of God. You can't continue to live like the devil and expect God to bless you. But if you want to live for God and you want to be obedient to God, God is going to bless you and help you and strengthen you and bring nothing but good out of this thing. If you're determined to live for Jesus, then the thing to do is, whenever you are confused, whenever you don't understand what's going on, remember, the one thing that you can do is call on the name of Jesus. He is Emmanuel today. He is God with us. He's with you if you love the Lord. Make sure that your life is hidden in Christ and that you will reach out to him right now to be your Lord and Savior. Receive Jesus into your heart. And I tell you, at this Christmas season, the best gift that you can give is to give your life to Christ. And the best gift that you can receive is Jesus coming into your heart right now to be your Lord and your Savior. Receive him right now. Accept Christ into your heart. Everything is going to turn for your life. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here.